Total Screen proudly presents their official podcast, On Screen, with your hosts, Tyson Gifford and William Rorig. everybody and welcome to a very special episode of On Screen. This is going to be an episode where we're going to be discussing a lot of news stories and only news stories from three specific events. A Nintendo Direct, a Sony State of Play, and Disney's D23 from this year. All these things happened within a few days of each other and we just didn't have room for it on our regular podcast. So we said, let's get together, let's bang out a quick podcast to talk about these three mega news dumps and then there's still going to be a regular podcast episode this week where we talk about she hulk and house of the dragon and other news from the week but we've, we're concentrating the news stories from these three big events into this special episode that we're recording which isn't numbered it's a special episode so for this journey i am your host my name is tyson my name is will and let's kick things off with sony's state of play it was the smallest of the three kind of yeah, events it was like, or uh... topics 20 minutes. Yeah, Start versus off about like a, 10 games. Yeah, versus like a 40 minute thing for Nintendo with like 50 games in it. <laughs> right. Or, or the Disney D23, which was like three days, you know. But we'll start things off with Sony State of Play. We're going to go through pretty much everything they showed, but we might not talk about it in detail. We're going to talk about mostly the stuff that we're interested in. They kicked off the show with Tekken 8. Yeah, they finally revealed Tekken 8. Uh, it looked great. Fantastic. I got two games. I Announced for PSVR 2, we're launching Ooh, next year. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. I try to tell Tyson like he he's a super VR fanboy, so like I had <laughs> to like calm him down before this. <laughs> <laughs> we got Star Wars: Tales from the Galaxy's Edge Enhanced Edition and Demio. Uh, I think they pronounced as Demio. When oh, I think Demio. When they had the yeah, thing. Demio. Star Wars it looks like a fairly standard single player adventure game, just in a first person perspective. But Demio is kind of interesting because it's like a tabletop like rpg with like cards and like figures and dice and stuff i don't think that really makes sense for vr like yeah. the vr implementation of it really wasn't that interesting yeah i get that <laughs> uh then there's a couple other announcements exclusive quests and hogwarts legacy announced this game pacific drive that looks like a combination between like a driving game and like an adventure game i think it looks really bad <laughs> yeah it, it did i mean all these great. games look visually nice Nice. Then for some reason they had to kill all momentum to talk about their stupid loyalty program and digital collectibles. <laughs> yeah, digital tchotchkes that like who who gives a shit? Then we got like a game from Bandai Namco, uh Sin Duality, which is like an anime style mecha game. Again, visually cool looking. Yeah. I don't really see much of a game in there that interests me. Yeah, it didn't interest me that much either. We gotta see we got, Project Eve again. Yeah, we got to see Project Eve again, Stellar Blade. It looks like a Perfectly serviceable Bayonetta Devil May Cry clone. I don't kind know. of boring. <laughs> yeah, it looked kind of boring. It's like it fits I, in that gameplay style, I, but without any flair. I could see myself picking it, picking it up and having some fun with it. So I'm not like super against that. And then we got like, what is, I'm going to say this is like my game of the entire day. Okay. See, I thought that you were pushing these all off to the end because you completely skipped over one of our highlighted games already. Which, which one did I like? A, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, so I'm that, like, is that, he trying to rearrange these and push these all to the end? No, that, that that's just me being like, uh, that's just me being blind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like a dragon Ishin, which is cool. Uh, it's a, it's a period remake. piece Yakuza. Yeah. It's, well, it's a remake remaster of Yakuza Ishin, which was re originally released on the PS3 and the PS4 back in like 2013 or so. And back then it was only released in Japan. It was never localized. Mm -hmm. This is going to be localized for the first time and they changed the title from Yakuza to Like a Dragon. That's one of the highlights from the show actually. 
really. Yeah. But it's interesting that they rebranded it to like a dragon. Yeah. Now we get to like what what's probably like the game of the entire day for me, which is uh Rise of the Rodin, which is like a new PlayStation 5 exclusive action game coming from Team Ninja. It's set in Japan during the Meiji era, and you play as a Ronin trying to make your way, I guess. It looks incredible. It looks stunning. Yeah, this is one of the few games that they showed at the Sony State of Play that actually looked like there was a game in there. Yeah. It was like interesting. <laughs> so it's not coming until 2024, but I am super excited for this game. Yeah, it's super far down the line, but it looks really good. Then we got what is actually the best announcement of the entire <laughs> day. The God of War Ragnarok limited edition dual sense controller. I saw that and like I was gonna be like, oh man, it'd be hilarious if they ended this on a controller. Yeah. <laughs> they have this huge dramatic reveal and it's like, yeah. oh come on, you know? It's like, a, like it's a cool learn, looking controller. Learn from controller. Nintendo. You just show it. You, you, yeah. don't, you don't have yeah. to like do a reveal. Yeah, you you know, it's not the first time we're seeing a dual sense controller, you know? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> They really built up that controller. It's a cool looking controller. I mean, I like it, but it's yeah. like, yeah. But then they actually showed a new trailer for God of War Ragnarok and I guess Which looks it, phenomenal. I yeah, mean, it looks phenomenal. Gorgeous game. It. Like it looks so yeah. pretty. Some of the, the shots of like the frozen northern areas look just amazing. The one shot where he like shoots the arrow at the sky to change the, the time of day. Oh yeah. It's like was crazy. really cool. I mean, I haven't played the new God of War games at all. I'm not really a PlayStation player, you know? So I don't, I haven't had those, but man, that game just looks really pretty. Yes, it does. That's it for Sony's state of play. Now we're going to move on to what was the most packed because it was over the course of like three or four days of the topics we're discussing today. And that is Disney's D23 event. They showed a bunch of stuff. Let's kick things off with, you know, Disney animation. I'm not going to cover all the stuff they showed. There's just one project that I think is worth noting, and that is Wish. Mm -hmm. And the reason that's worth noting is is this is the return to hand-drawn animation. Oh, interesting. So okay. they're Disney I... animation doing actual hand-drawn animation. <laughs> now on to Star Wars. The first thing I have on my notes here is Skeleton Crew. They only showed like a singles picture from it. This is the John Watts Goonies-esque series that's going to be starring Jude Law. Oh, um, right. Set yeah. in the Star Wars universe. It's set during the New Republic era, which is like post-Return of the Jedi, basically. It's like the same time as uh, like Mandalorian and the kind of like the most of the Disney Plus series stuff. I'm really excited about the series because of who's involved and some of the ideas that it's going to like this kind of coming of age thing and stuff. But we just got one pick. That's, <laughs> that's all we got. It's, it's hard to kind of judge anything based on that. So let's move on to our next one, which is Tales of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. We got a trailer for that. What did you think of that? Yeah, I thought the trailer looked really cool. Obviously, it's focusing on three Jedi, Ahsoka, Mace Windu, and Count Dooku. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, I think it looks it looks pretty cool. I'm I, I haven't really watched like Clone Wars and stuff. It, it very clearly has that visual style. Then we got a trailer for The Mandalorian season three. Which man, one yeah. thing that's like a theme that runs through the entirety of D twenty three is like all of the trailers they put out are fucking phenomenal, and they all have great music, and they're all <laughs> you know they just they did a hell of a job cutting these trailers, man. And this Mandalorian trailer is is no different in that aspect. Aspect, you know, it's a right. very well edited trailer with oh, very yeah, good very, music throughout it. And yeah, it's a very well done trailer. I've been kind of out of the Star Wars Disney Plus stuff, but I'm, I'm kind of excited about watching Mandalorian again. Oh, yeah, same. Next, we have a show that's coming up really soon on September 21st. They're going to drop the first three episodes of and that is Andor, which we got yet another trailer for. And again, this is just it looks so good. Yes, it does. Uh, it looks like the best thing they've done for Star Wars, Disney Star Wars. Next up, we got a trailer, or we're out of Star Wars now, we got a trailer for Willow, which is also from through Lucasfilm. Besides the trailer, we'll get to that afterwards, we also got the announcement that Christian Slater is joining the cast, and his character is described as a friend of Val Kilmer's character from the original Willow movie, Mad Mardigan. Which, so, sure, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. 
<laughs> we don't really know what that means. Like I saw friend written in quotation marks. Like maybe we're supposed to be a little uneasy or he's portraying himself as a friend. We don't know, but he's yeah, not, not even in the that. trailer as far as I was able uh, to I see. didn't see him. I think I would have recognized him if I saw him. I don't recall seeing yeah. the trailer. So yeah. I'm a big fantasy head, so I'm super psyched for Willow. Willow was like one of my favorite movies as a kid. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I've seen Willow. I saw Willow back in the day. I don't know if it was like one of my favorite movies or like it particularly like stuck with me, but it was perfectly entertaining. It's hard to beat uh, that evil knight with like a skull mask, yeah. you know? <laughs> right. Next, we had Indiana Jones 5. A trailer was shown to attendees, but that did not include Will and myself. We were not attendees of <laughs> we D23, so we did not get to see this trailer. Un- unfortunately not. <laughs> the only thing that's kind of really worth mentioning about this at the D23 event is that the actor who played Short round in the original uh, Temple of Doom and I, was he in Raiders? I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember. But anyways, he was at the D23 event as well because uh, he's got this little career resurgence going on now and he's going to be in Loki and so he happened to be there but not Indiana Indiana Jones panel because he's not in that movie but they, get, they got a picture of him and Harrison Ford together and it's just, it's pretty adorable. Yeah. He was, he was the little kid in, in Indiana Jones so it's kind of it was crazy to see them together again so that's really cool then we got she hulk another thing where they showed a clip from one of the episodes that we did not get <laughs> again but this was the clip with daredevil in it and from the reports of it this daredevil is only going to be in one episode of she hulk we knew he was going to be coming up and uh apparently there's some uh flirty action going on between jennifer and daredevil yeah uh, looking forward to seeing that i think it'd be fun to yeah, just see like two super lawyers right Right. That's, <laughs> that's obviously the reason he's showing up. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Next thing we got a trailer for, and again, D23 killing it with the trailers, Secret Invasion. Oh, God. Yeah, this looked good. This, yeah. This looks so good. Very, uh, like, uh, Winter Soldier vibes I got. I've been it. I've been pretty down on the Disney Marvel shows recently, just because they've been, like, eh, you know, they, they've been pretty mediocre, I'm, I'm going to say. But this looks like it's getting that excitement back. This is getting back to like the stuff I loved from like the MCU. Yeah, like I said, I got serious Winter Soldier vibes. Yes, same. It, so same. it's got that espionage kind of side of MCU, which is really cool. Yeah, like paranoid, but like also like 100% correct Nick Fury just being like freaking a badass covert operative. Got all this intrigue and like there's going to be the mystery of like, oh, who's a scroll and who's not? It's going to be fantastic. Next up, Echo. We didn't get to see anything from that. There was some information given. I think some footage was showing some of the things i saw coming out of it that were kind of interesting is people were hinting at the possibility of her having powers in this version of it which you know besides just basically being able to use her other senses which i don't know how that's gonna work and and it wasn't like clearly shown to be the case it was just i guess it was implied she didn't have powers in hawkeye so i don't really freaking know yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen with that. The other thing is that Kingpin showed up in either pictures or footage with an eye patch. So oh, I yeah. guess, uh, when she shot him, I guess at the end of yeah. uh, Hawkeye, that that's what they're implying that's from. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, no. Yeah. That's, uh, that's 100% it. She shoots him and she blinds him in one eye. That's actually from a comic storyline. So hmm. the other thing worth noting is that they're really leaning into the character's indigenous background by having a largely indigenous cast and they said they're going to lean heavily into like how that is a cultural thing for that character right um, and then so that's interesting. also charlie cox is gonna also be in the series yeah it's interesting with the indigenous thing though because i mentioned last week that we have had like a lot of shows popping up that are kind of like leaning into that so it's kind of cool to see that continuing on for sure next up we got some more information about Ironheart. i think they showed like a new logo for it if i'm not mistaken mm-hmm. but the main points is that they revealed that the main villain of the series is going to be Red Hood and Um, that he's going to be it's going to be kind of a magic versus tech story okay so that's kind of interesting (laughs) Uh, I'm not too familiar with Red Hood but apparently he's a character with uh, you know a mystic background in the comics it's funny because like when I think Red Hood I think of uh, DC yeah Robin (laughs) oh yeah yeah, yeah. former Robin yeah different Red Hood (laughs) it's actually okay yeah it's the 
the hood in the comics. That's okay. So it's not Red Hood. Or oh, it, I I copied this from some article. They might have gotten it wrong. I don't they, know. Yeah, they might got yeah. Because I'm like, wait, how how does Marvel and DC have a character called Red Hood at the same time? <laughs> like, I I know that stuff like happens, but that's mostly because of, like legacy stuff. But that's like recent enough for like DC to like have Captain Marvel, man. Suit. <laughs> yeah, Captain Marvel. Uh, that happened, but now like DC calls uh their Captain Marvel Shazam, so it's kind of like yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't know what the what the deal is with that. It could have just been written wrong in the article that I uh used as my source for the notes. Obviously I can't use anything from first hand of what was shown at D twenty three for Ironheart because I wasn't there. I remember like <laughs> uh the idea behind the hood is like he was a petty criminal who who finds this magic hood that gives him like magical powers and then he uses it to become a crime boss. What I heard about what they were mentioning is that I guess the main character, I can't remember her name, Ironheart, is going to be, she's like 15 and she's at MIT. Yeah. And I guess she's like stealing some stuff from MIT and selling it to Red Hood or something. I don't know how that works, if she got like tricked into doing that or if she's doing it because she can't afford to go there. Or, I don't know what the what the story conceit is for that, but that's how they're kind of establishing the relationship between the two. And then the Hood is going to be, obviously he's going to represent magic while Ironheart represents tech and they're kind of yeah. like putting that as the like cornerstone of that series next up we got some more information on loki season two as i mentioned before ki hu kwan who was from the goonies and also from indiana jones uh the guy, yeah, the guy who be, took um, that picture with harrison ford two. he's gonna yeah. be in season two of loki so that's exciting he's gotten like a little career resurgence recently because yeah, of uh, yeah, everything like, everywhere really cool. at once so definitely that's what we got from that we got a few more details about Daredevil Born Again. This wasn't on the stage, but from interviews that Charlie Cox was given, he said it's going to be really, really emotional, and he also confirmed I, that I, it is not a continuation. I, I want to stress that Charlie Cox also said, like, he doesn't actually know anything about it. Like, he has not seen a script, mm. so he doesn't, like, know the plot. Oh, so when he says happen. it's really, really emotional, he just means for him. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's emotional for him. That's what he means. He did say though that it's not going to be a continuation. Yeah. Which is I about what I figured. You know, I mean, you look at like, say, for example, Kingpin, as he appeared in Hawkeye, it was a very different, even though it was the same actor, it was a very different Kingpin. It was a different than the one from the Netflix. But, yeah. but then again, like, you can't, like, gauge from that because, like, these characters are also going to be slightly different depending on the show they're in. Like, Charlie Cox in She-Hulk is probably going to be, like, a more comedic, lighthearted portrayal than mm -hmm. in his own show. Yeah, I agree with yeah, that. Because but... it's got matched the tone of the show that it's in. But it's it's to me it's pretty clear that they're not going to use all of the legacy of the Netflix content. That they'll probably just oh, yeah. that off as that's a oh, different yeah. reality. You know? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, definitely. And that's what I've been saying from the start is like that's not MCU canon and they're not yeah. going to keep that as canon. Yeah, even, even though, like... though they're bringing in actors playing the same parts and stuff. They're doing yeah. that but they're just it's, it's convenient. Marvel can just say oh that's a multiverse thing. Yeah. Next up, another thing we got a trailer for, Werewolf by Night. I'm psyched for this. I like that cool. they went really stylistic with it. Yeah, same. They went like old like uh, 40s. It invokes both uh, the Universal horror movies as well as like the Hammer horror films. Yeah, like the Wolfman and stuff. It the really Wolfman has that kind of stuff. vibe to it. Yeah, which is which is really cool. I'm looking for, forward to that. Uh, this obviously introduces the Werewolf by Night to the MCU, but also introduces another character a uh, monster hunter uh, Elsa Bloodstone mm. as well. Uh, Another character as well, see. Man Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man Thing showed up, which is interesting for a number of reasons because he could be he's connected to uh, this phase because uh, Man Thing is the uh, keeper at the nexus of all realities. That's going to be kind of cool. Like, I'm just interested in how this is going to be played off because it's it's very stylized. It's got a very interesting look to it, and it, I'm not sure how much is supposed to be. I mean, it's supposed to be canon, but I don't know how much of it's supposed to be like literal canon and how much is supposed to be like oh this is like a stylized interpretation kind of thing so it'll be interesting to see how they do that of course you know information everybody already knows Gail Garcia Bernal is the one playing the lead in this this is something everybody knew about but this was confirmed Werewolf by Night wasn't even confirmed at all until D23 right yeah so all of this was officially confirmed at that time it's also going to be a 60 minute special it's not a series it's not a movie it's a special yeah. um, and it's 
that's coming on October 7th. And the last thing is that uh, a guy, I can't, I'll never be able to pronounce this guy's name, Michael Giacchino, uh, I think. <laughs> I think that's how he pronounce it. He's a composer. He did the music for Lost, for example. He also did oh, the music okay. for some Pixar movies like Up. He's directing this, not doing the music, but directing. So I just, that's just like a little interesting detail besides that. Next up, Captain America, New World Order. We got a few casting stories that are kind of interesting here. All reprising roles. Tim Blake Nelson is going to rep- be reprising his role as the leader from the Incredible Hulk movie. That's so, kind of a strange choice of a lead villain for a Captain America film, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> They've been doing for the Incredible Hulk what Marvel did for Age of Ultron, like, you know, a couple years ago. They've been, like, rehabilitating that movie, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they have, because, yeah, they brought back the Abomination now, and now they're bringing back the leader. Nobody expected them to bring back the leader from the MCU Hulk movie, like... <laughs> Are you saying that the leader is the Spanish Inquisition? Yes, nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. It's interesting. I have a theory as to what's going on with the leader and how it ties into Captain America and stuff. And actually, it ties into, like, She-Hulk. The scene, like, where those goons were trying to, like, extract She-Hulk blood. Oh, you think they're working for the leader? Yes, I think they're working for the leader, and I think he's trying to use Hulk blood to create a new super soldier serum. Mm. That probably brings Captain America into it. Hmm. That would make sense. Yeah. Uh, The other casting stories we got again two reprising roles Danny Ramirez who played Joaquin Torres in Falcon and the Winter Soldier is going to be returning as the same character but his character will now be uh, become the new Falcon now that Falcon is uh, the oh, Captain right. America yeah. and Makes then sense. Carl Lumley who played Isaiah Bradley is also returning yes which is cool yeah that, that was like a story that was like really fascinating when they brought him up in Falcon and the Winter Soldier and we just didn't get much of it you know right we only yeah. got like a a scene basically so it's gonna be cool that they're like going back into that next up we have ant-man and the wasp quantum mania we didn't get too much from this they showed some footage including some footage of modok who is seen in some of the footage that they were showing so there's going to be all sorts of weird multiverse stuff going on in this movie but the most important thing is that kevin feige and others have been persistently stating that ant-man and the wasp is kind of like the key non-avengers movie for this whole like multi multiverse plan yes. like this is going to be basically a through line into phase five all the way into avengers king dynasty like what happens in this we already knew king the conqueror was the main villain of this movie there's been rumors that like you know we might get a first glimpse of the fantastic four in this movie right that's the kind of the news we got from this is less like about anything directly showing and more just like talk about how important this movie is going to be so i'm excited for that mm-hmm. oh yeah for sure we got a little bit more about the marvels not too terribly much. They've said it's going to have a bit of a lighter tone, more comedic tone than yeah. Captain Marvel had. Yeah, the, the plot sounds weird. It's like they swap places every time they use they use their powers, mm-hmm. and like they have to team up and find out what's behind it. And I'm like, that's kind of a weird premise for a movie, but okay, <laughs> it's all. Else. Let's see where they go. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, let's see where they go with it. I guess like I don't know if I'm like too super hyped for this movie, like based on like that description. <laughs> and the, the like more comedic but we'll, we'll see how they do with it yeah yeah it'll be interesting to see like how they handle that lastly we got some cast reveals for a big marvel movie i think a lot of people are expecting we were going to get cast re- reveals for fantastic four at d23 we did not get those but we did get cast reveals for another movie and that is thunderbolts we got to see kind of what our lineup of the Thund- thunderbolts yeah. is which is I'll, I'll say it very quickly and then you can give me your impressions okay red guardian yelena U.S. Agent, Winter Soldier, Ghost, Taskmaster, and Valentina. Yeah, um, kind of mixed on this. One thing that stands out to me is that this is very much a quasi Black Widow sequel, especially looking at this lineup. You have three, arguably four characters who debuted in Black Widow. Yeah. Uh, Red Guardian, Yelena. Three who did and one who was supposed to before the COVID shakeups. Yeah, before they switched, well, they switched the airing of things around, right? And then you got like two characters. Well, one one's been around for a while, and then but the other one, uh, U.S. 
U.S. agent. They U.S. agent and Winter Soldier, who are both in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, along with Valentina again. And then you have Ghost from uh, Ant Man Two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's interesting where they're gonna go. I mean, they're, they're they're a lot of people have been comparing this to Suicide Squad, saying it's kind of like the quasi Marvel version of Suicide Squad in a way. Eh, I think I thematically, like on paper, it says that. I doubt it's gonna be anything like Suicide Squad in actual it's, execution. Yeah, I don't think so. Also, like it's not like really like a super villain. Thing. None of these characters are like out and out villains. Mm-hmm. Like. Yeah, they're all like anti-heroes or even just straight heroes at this point, you know? Yeah. Winter Soldier used to be a villain and is now just a straight-up Avenger. A straight-up Avenger. U.S. agent, he's a bit of an asshole, but he genuinely believes in doing the right thing and trying to be the best person he can be. He's not trying to be a villain. Yeah, Taskmaster uh, <laughs> was the villain in... Uh, in Black Widow. Yeah, but ended up being but she was something like else. Brainwashed. So it's interesting. I mean, there's characters I like here that I'd like to see interact with other characters. Like, oh, yeah. Like, I really liked Red Guardian in nah. Black Widow. Like, I didn't, Black Widow wasn't that great of a movie, but the, two Guardian, of the I best like parts Yelena. of that movie are in this, which is Red Guardian yeah. and Yelena. And it's going to be cool to see, like, for example, Red Guardian interact with Winter Soldier. Oh, yeah. It'll because be, a big part yeah. of the joke in Red Guardian is how he was obsessed with Captain America. Yeah, Red Guardian, like, uh, he, he's supposed, he's Russia's version of Captain America, right? right? He's yeah. Captain, he's Captain Russia. So yeah, it'll be fun fun to see him. It'll Not be, just Winter Soldier, but U.S. Agent, too. Yeah, like U.S. They both Agent. kind of represent states of Captain America, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. It'll be really fun to see him interact with U.S. Agent. <laughs> They're not going to get along, I don't, I predict <laughs> very well. <laughs> I think but it'll be like a fun way that they yeah. won't get along. It'll be, it won't be like a, they won't get along. It'll be tension. It'll be more like humor, yeah. I think, that they don't get along. Right. It also, I, I can't imagine they're going to pass up, up on, on an opportunity to pair up Ghost with Taskmaster just from the sense that Taskmaster's whole gimmick is that she can do anybody else's fighting style and Ghost is the only character on this team that has like actual like abilities that aren't just like being stronger. Right. Yeah, exactly. So that's I think that would be kind of funny. It's a yeah, style that Taskmaster can't copy. So what's interesting about this is uh, Kevin Feige when talking about Thunderbolts at D23, uh, he confirmed that there's no Avengers in the MCU right now. He said that there's no organization called the Avengers. Yeah. So this team is kind of stepping in and, like, filling that void in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like a disposable, more military-controlled... Yes. You know, kind of sketchier version of the Avengers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. I, I want to see what they do with that. I understand your hesitancy, probably mostly having to deal with uh, not just that it's similar to Black uh, Black Widow, but I know that you know for me it didn't affect me Taskmaster in the Black Widow movie because I didn't I wasn't even aware of the character before that, so it didn't have any yeah. effect on me. But I know pretty much everybody who liked that character walked away from Black Widow upset. So yeah, they need to like redo Taskmaster for this movie. They need to give her a personality and. Give give her agency because she did not have that in Black Widow. Yeah, so. that's it for D23. Now we're going to move on to Nintendo Direct. So Nintendo had their long-awaited full Nintendo Direct. They've been doing these like game-specific ones or like a partner Direct or these mini Directs. This is the first legit straight-up Nintendo Direct in a while. Yeah, so, they skipped doing one in June. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. Some of this we're just going to fly through really quickly and some of it we're going to discuss. Yeah, there's only like three or four big things that I'm really like interested in and the rest we can just fly through. Well, we're going to kick things off with one of those, which is Fire Emblem Engage, which uh, is the so worst title, the worst logo, and a warning <laughs> direction as far as thematically for the series, but man, it looks good. It's like the idea, I think the idea is like it's an anniversary game for Fire Emblem's 30th anniversary, which already passed, but what people have been saying is like this game has been complete for a while and Nintendo is sitting on it. We actually had, like, screenshots of this game leak back in June that people were, like, iffy on. If these are these real, they turned out to be very real. I'm gonna say something, and that is that I don't like it when people refer to something being too stylistic and, and not really meaningful as being, like, oh, that's very anime. Right, I, yeah. I think same. a better descriptor is that it's very shonen, because anime is, like, a very broad medium, but shonen's, like, yes. a category within that. I think this is 
very shonen. And yes, it it's is. kind of upsetting because Three Houses was like a much more mature entry. It was. This seems to be kind of going like back to basics. And it's got the gimmick, a spirit summoning or something. <laughs> like, which, is, which just like makes me think previous, of the mobile, previous the gotcha Fire game. Emblem characters. Like I said, like this is supposed to be a celebration game for the anniversary. The whole gimmick is you're summoning classic characters because it's a celebration of the franchise. Yeah. Is I'm, essentially I'm not what really they're going for. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, think, I think graphically it looks great. I think, yeah, I, it, it looks, looks really sharp and clean. I just, I'm... <sighs> You I know, don't I, like the idea of summoning characters. and It's like, I get what they're going for. I just don't like it. You know what? I'm, I'm fine with it. I think the gameplay looks solid. It's gonna, probably going to be as solid as ever in the gameplay department. And even It's just going like, to have an unbearable story, twee storyline. Yeah, even if the storyline isn't like as rich as Three Houses... I'm fine with that. I'm not. That's game reading for me. Like, I, I play RPGs and SRPGs and stuff primarily for the characterization and the story. You know, it's like the gameplay is second to that. In but, my we, but we don't know. It, it could surprise you. When you it could. When you I mean, I'll, I'll state this right up. I had these same kind of concerns I'm having with, with this to a lesser extent, but still the same with Xenoblade Chronicles 3 when it was clear that there was like some kind of crossover thing going on with it. And I love that game. So it didn't turn out to be an issue. But you also turn out not in, in Xenoblade Chronicles 3 not to be just summoning characters from games. Right. <laughs> so where you are in this, which just makes us feel like Fire Emblem Heroes, the console game. I, I, I'm i concerned. Fair enough. Our next couple of games, not too much worth mentioning. It takes two. Uh, Everybody knows about that game coming to Switch. Game Fatal of the Frame. Year. <laughs> game, game Awards from last year. <laughs> Fatal Frame Mask of the Lunar Eclipse, which was a Wii entry in the franchise that was directly Directed by Suda51 is yep, coming over. It's worth noting, yeah, that's coming over localized for the first time. So, yeah. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is going to have its Wave 2 DLC on October 13th. This includes a new character named Eno that seems to have like her own kind of like skill tree thing that's like unique to her. And also, they're bringing in challenge battles, which was something they introduced in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And they also put it in Definitive Edition, where you could do these kind of like time trials trials of like different enemy types and you'd earn like a special currency which you could then use to buy costumes and special accessories that would do things like give you lots of experience and stuff so they're bringing all that kind of stuff into the game as well as a new character and some quest related to that character so as a Xenoblade Chronicles 3 fan I'm excited for that but it's not that big of a story Spongebob Squarepants the Cosmic Shake so oddly I think you might be somewhat interested in this just because it has a very like old right. school 3D platformer look to it. Yeah, I, like, yeah, yeah, you're right, that did appeal to me. <laughs> like, you pegged it. Uh, yeah, I do have a soft spot for, like, those PlayStation 2, GameCube era, like, 3D platformers. I don't know how good this is gonna be, but yeah. Yeah, I was gonna, like, Banjo-Kazooie, like, type vibes from it or something, or Kalenia right, yeah. even, maybe, I don't know. Then we got, this next game was revealed, and I was getting excited, and then the drop came, and I lost all faith in humanity. Oh, yeah, I saw, I saw, well, the first thing I thought of is like, oh, are they porting that Fist of the North Star game from the Yakuza team, like the Switch? And it's like, <laughs> no, of course not. They're doing fitness boxing. Like, and and like, they didn't what? even call it Fitness of the North Star. No. I mean, what a yeah, what a mistake. Yeah. yeah don't even wow. use a funny name. What what a what a waste. <laughs> Next up we got Oddballers. This is from Ubisoft, isn't it? Yes. It's, and it's uh, like a it's like a bunch of dodgeball based mini games, it looks like. Yeah. It, it looked like a cute little time waster, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Nothing. I guess Ubisoft is doing something on Switch. Yeah, right. Besides the uh, Mario and Rabbit stuff, which we'll yeah, get to besides, later. Yes. Next up, we have Tunic, which uh, is really coming cool out. Really cool to see this on Switch. If you're jonesing for some 2D Zelda, This is one of those ones that I'm like, I thought this nice was already tunic. on the Switch. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Next, we got three game reveals. Front Mission first remake, Front Mission uh, 2 remake, and a the first announcement for Front Mission 3 Three remake, which they didn't show anything of. Yes, they said that's coming later. Uh, the Front Mission games were a series of uh, SRPGs Square made in the 90s, primarily.
entirely for the PlayStation. They're like near future ish mech based yeah. uh, SRPGs. So yeah, they're doing remakes for the the first three games in the series or the three numbered games in the series, I guess. So those are coming out. The first one's on November and then second game's coming next year. And the third game got the vague later as its release date. Next up, we have Story of Seasons, A Wonderful Life. This is a remake of... <laughs> the start of the farming apocalypse. First of all, Story of Seasons, A Wonderful Life. This is a remake of Harvest Moon, A Wonderful Life. that was on the mm-hmm. GameCube back in the day. Yeah. And yeah, it's called story of seasons now because of very complicated right stuff that we won't get into yeah international <laughs> ip right yeah. name stuff yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's coming summer 2023 i don't have too much to say for it except that this began the fucking farm apocalypse <laughs> the farm apocalypse yeah, there's a lot of farming games coming to switch farming sim fans are feasting yeah. let's just say but like harvest this is harvest moon this is like the og of farming sims right so you gotta put some spec on its name Next up, we got an update for Splatoon 3, which is, of course, already out. Pretty much the only information we really got was that they were going to have continued support, which we already knew. And they announced the theme for the second Splatfest for the game. The first one was before the game even came out. But this new one is the theme is Deserted Island. And it's what you would would bring to a deserted island. And the three choices are gear, grub, and fun. Tyson, what would you bring to a deserted island? See, I thought about this. And I'd have to say, I mean, it really depends on what is on the island but i would say grub probably and then that would give you enough time to find the gears you would need the gear you would need Mm -hmm. or to make the gear you would need for survival there whereas i think if you just started with gear you don't know what you're actually going to be able to find to eat and drink and stuff you know yeah that makes sense i I was just gonna bring fun (laughs) (laughs) you're gonna be hurley bringing the disc man yeah exactly some tunes well this uh splatfest is happening on september 25th and uh yeah so if you're into splatoon three get ready for that next up uh, we got a reveal trailer that i was really excited about octopath traveler 2 coming yes on february 24th 2023 it and looks what, great one big thing they announced for this i know people are annoyed with the original because like the uh the stories never intertwined they specifically said eight intertwining stories in the trailer for this mm-hmm. so people could be happy about that yeah it's gonna be interesting to see how they do it because yeah octopath traveler the first one was kind of like loosely and Inspired by Live Alive, which yes. then the team remade Live Alive after <laughs> Octopath Traveler using right. the Octopath Traveler art style. And one of the things they did in Live Alive that was really cool was that they added in a lot of like 3D elements that weren't in Octopath Traveler that still kind of fit in, but like large object type stuff and stuff to kind of break it up so that they weren't stuck to just doing sprites with cool lighting effects, you know, uh, that they can make it a little bit more rich and interesting. And that seems to have carried over from Live Alive into Octopath 2. So a lot of the stuff in the trailer looks really cool, and I'm I'm excited about that. It also looks like it's got a dark storyline, which the first game did as well. So that's cool. Uh, yeah. And we got another farming game, Fay Farm. Fay Farm. Oh yes. Yeah. If you uh, like those farming games, but you need to be a fairy when you do it, Fay Farm, Farm for you. For you. Yeah. And then we got more Square Enix because, like, why not? <laughs> this is the Square Enix Direct, after all. We got Theater Rhythm, Final Bar, Line, up to 502 songs with like all the paid DLC. Which is yeah. insane. It's pretty much got like what, like every Final Fantasy song and then like stuff from like Live Alive and then Near and shit and like the DLC. I've never played a theater rhythm game. Could be fun though. I uh, have zero interest. I know people who, who are theater rhythm fans are really excited about this. So yeah. If you're into that, you're into that and you're, and you're going to be well fed. Yes. <laughs> uh, Next up, we got a, a new information on Mario and Rabbit's Sparks of Hope or not. I mean, was it too much new information? I guess they said you can kind of you can freely wander in the stages now besides just the combat scenarios i think that's new i don't know i'm not really into that game so i don't (laughs) we got a new trailer for rune factory 3 special and they announced in a farming games yes rune factory they announced new rune factory series is also in development yeah that's the key thing they said series not games yeah we don't know what that means but anyway nintendo switch online expansion pass we got an update for that we got more in 64 games Games coming Pilot Link 64, Mario Party, Mario Party 2, Mario Party 3, Pokemon Stadium, Pokemon Stadium 2, Tennessee Snowboarding, Excite Bike 64, and then a bonus surprise game. They um, announced GoldenEye 007 coming to Switch Online with online multiplayer, which yeah. is very significant. The unsignificant thing is that they're not getting the remaster that has.
as gonna have all the convenient so here's the <laughs> quality of life improvements and shit. Yeah, so yeah, so this is straight the Nintendo 64 ROM because it's running in Nintendo 64 emulator that has attachments to facilitate online. But here's the weird thing. Rare at the same time announced that this is also coming to Xbox. Well, a version is, is coming with like uh, 4K and a bunch of other quality of life improvements. They're technically not the same game. But the weird thing is like there's no online multiplayer on the Xbox version and this has been confirmed. The online multiplayer is exclusive to GoldenEye 007 on Nintendo Switch Online. Yeah, just weird. <laughs> yeah, just weird. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine that's going to change at some point. I imagine it's not going to stay that way. At least for now. That's just a I- it's uh, uh, Steven Totilio posts on Twitter. An Xbox spokesperson tells me GoldenEye for Xbox is a faithful recreation of a much loved and iconic title and confirms there are no plans to include online multiplayer. It'll be playable locally for four players like the original. Yeah, the that's what they say until the fans start complaining. As online. They said, <laughs> I, I asked why, and this is what they said. Read, they were not in the mood to explain. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Uh, another Square Enix game was showed this one with Square Enix's brilliant naming sense. Oh, yeah. Uh, various Day Life, which also is, seems to have some kind of farming mechanics in it as well. Uh, interesting it has every yeah, kind this, of this, day job mechanics This in it. is This is an art game from Team Asano. This is an art game from the Octopath Traveler team. One notable thing about this was this was previously exclusive to Apple Arcade. And oh, jeez. Okay. I lost exclusive- even more interest. Yeah, this was, a, <laughs> this was previously on Apple Arcade, and the exclusive contract ran out, hence now it's appearing on Switch. God, if we're gonna get games from Apple Arcade, why can't we get that, like, one from, uh, Sakaguchi? I, I, would, I would love that to happen. It seems determined to not happen for some reason. Yeah. I, but I would love that, because I'd love to actually be able to play that outside of a phone game subscription service, but well. You say this is from the Octopath team. I think it's not from that specific team. It's from that studio, which it would be the team, like, art style-wise, it looks like it's from the Bravely Default team. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. That, yeah, that's right. Which it's is brave, it's under team. the same leadership. Yeah. Next up, we have Factorio, which is a sci-fi management sim that I'm yes. not interested in at all. Same. And then we got <laughs> Eve, some creepy... You described it as creepy JRPG art gallery, and I'm going to say, yeah, it looked weird. And then we got some free updates for Mario Strikers Bad League. We got Pauline, our stuff, don't really care. Diddy Kong, uh, yeah. yeah Diddy really. Kong, yes, Diddy Kong. And we got Atelier Ryza 3, Alchemist and the end of the secret key. So the interesting thing with this game is that it's a really big, like they're like, I don't mean big like popular, but big like as in a lot of content. RPG yeah. franchise, like all the entries have a lot of stuff in them, uh, big stories, lots of huge worlds and stuff. But they've never really, they've put them out on Switch like a lot of games and then in the Atelier I can't even pronounce the name. Atelier. Atelier franchise. They put a lot of those out on the Switch but they just kind of like drop them with like no notification no right. presence and anything and it's usually when we do when we cover one of the nintendo directs and i'll look at the japanese direct and see what games were shown there that weren't shown in the u.s direct it's almost always there's an atelier game in there <laughs> so it's interesting that we actually got it in the u.s direct on this one so it's, it, they've never really uh, promoted this franchise here then we got mario kart 8 deluxe booster pass wave 3 we they only showed us two courses so far from that mary mountain from mario kart tour and peach gardens from DS. Here's uh, the here's the good thing about that. Like zero G. Yeah. They showed zero G in the trailer again. That's what we said the, in the last track. They they brought in a track in the last wave that add zero G, and we were like, bring us more zero G. And apparently, Nintendo listens to our podcast. And then we got golf coming to Nintendo Switch Sports, which this is we knew that was happening. This is uh, originally supposed to come in fall, and now it's coming uh, holiday. Holiday. Uh, the Miyamoto showed up to kill the mood, <laughs> <laughs> to, to harsh our buzz in the middle. Of it. Uh, he, he briefly mentioned, mentioned with seemingly no purpose sup- the Super Mario Brothers movie and Universal Studios Super Mario World. Oh, there's the no, the, the, there's there was no new it. information. Sorry, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like he reiterated that the Mario Brothers movies come next spring. Is that, that they're like, still coming? But like those are the projects he's the most involved with right but now. He, yeah, I mean, he but just he, there's yeah. no new information. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then he went to talk about Pikmin Bloom, which is oh, the Niantic Pikmin word. game. Yeah, this that came out a, over 
over a year ago, and he went around to make it the longest segment in the entire <laughs> track. Yeah, yeah, he spent like two minutes talking about this mobile app. It's like, yeah. this is like the biggest troll in the world. It's like, like, imagine going to like a new Marvel movie, and you're super excited, and then halfway through the movie, they stop it, and some guy gets up on stage to show you his rubber band collection. Yeah, That's- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like, like he trolled because he said, like, he he said Pikmin, and like I perked up. I was like, oh. Oh, Pikmin? Okay, yeah. Let's, let's see Pikmin. And he's like, oh, here's this mobile app that was already out that you didn't care about and proceed to talk about that for two minutes. And I was like, what the hell is happening? I gotta imagine he was even legit like, trolling. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 it was like, it, it was desperation. It was like, uh, this app is underperforming. Please play it. Please download it. Please, for love of God. Thankfully, he didn't leave us flat footed because he did like follow that up by actually announcing Pikmin 4. And we didn't get the see much of it eight years as a nearly complete game <laughs> yeah, yeah eight years it, it's clearly not the same game that yeah we talked about. it's clearly been rebooted since then but yeah it, it's coming out next year finally people can stop asking about pikmin 4 i'm excited for it i had a lot of fun with pikmin 3 it looks good from the two screenshots they showed us yeah yeah there's just not a lot to go on no information other than this Pikmin, right? And yeah. I mean, it looked interesting. It looked like it a, just looked. It looked clean. There was like a park bench yeah. and stuff. So like you're in a park in this part. I don't know. It looks yeah, clean it and looked sharp. Clean. That's about all I can say. You know? I, I saw. I saw some people speculating that oh, this is a Switch Two game. Look how clean it looks. Somebody no, it doesn't look that clean. Yeah. <laughs> people keep saying this about random games. They need to stop. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then we got the game of the show, the uh, game yeah, of the millennia, Just oh, Dance God. 2023. Uh, God. And moving on to Harvestella. Uh, more farming. <laughs> more farming. This this was your favorite game for the last direct, I remember. You so the thing about Harvestella was like, I like so much about it, and then it's a farming game. Yeah. Like, I love the art style at least it. I love the at least look it looks of it, and like, it's a farming game. At least it looks more interesting than our farming games. At least it looks like it's got more going on. Yeah, it but looks yeah. like it has an actual story with actual characters. And Right. <laughs> the one piece of interesting news we got is that there's a demo out today, and your save data will transfer over. Square does that a lot. Thank you, Square. We got it's very, new, it's uh, very nice. We got a new tr- story trailer for Bayonetta 3, as well as new gameplay It was trailer. a trailer for a trailer. <laughs> yes, they released yes. separately. <laughs> yeah, true. We got a game trailer. I didn't watch a gameplay trailer. It's like eight minutes, and I'm like, hey, no, I'll, I'll just play the game because it's uh, It looks down. really cool. So I'll, the, the few brief yeah. things I'll mention about it before we move on is that you can like become these infernal beasts that you would like summon with your hair before. So like mm-hmm. they showed her like turning into the spider thing and like crawling up a building and jumping across using like spider yeah. webs and stuff. There's just yeah, cool shit that like before. in there that looks really cool. Yeah. Yeah, so. I remember they showed that in like the last trailer they had uh in like the last direct they did back in yeah, February. But, but they're showing it for not just for combat, but like for literally for like exploration and stuff, which yeah. is really cool. Then we got a new game from the Dagen Rampa team, Master Detective Archives Rain Code, which looks... And it ex- looks really cool. I just don't think I was... Cool. I don't think I have the it, patience it looks, for it, but... It looks as eccentric as the Dagen Rapa games. But like, like it looks like on a larger scale, like it's right. an actual kind of like a quasi sandbox environment or something that these mysteries are going to take place in. Like we don't know how much of that is and the then, case, but. And then we got cloud games announced. We got cloud versions of all the uh, modern Resident Evil games coming to Switch now. Yeah, that's Resident Evil Village, Resident Evil 2 Remake, Resident Evil 3 Remake, and Resident Evil 7, which I thought it wasn't there, but it, it actually was. Was. Seven yeah, is I there. guess it's there. When it's we were originally talking about it, we were like kind of surprised that Seven wasn't there because it was the first cloud game Nintendo tested. Yeah, um, in Japan only, uh, but it is coming. So yeah, it's co- it's coming. So I mean, if if you don't have like any other way to play mm-hmm. these games, I guess if you don't have any other way to play I, these games, get Stadia. I have a PlayStation. I have a PlayStation, so it's fine. <laughs> if you don't have any other ways to play it, get Stadia because the one thing I'll say about Stadia versus Nintendo on the cloud cloud front is that Nintendo doesn't really do a great job on the cloud. It doesn't have to do a software. It's because the Wi-Fi hardware in which is kind of garbage. So mm-hmm. just try to avoid cloud games on the Switch, not because I'm anti-cloud, because a lot of people 
people are, but I'm not. But because the streaming hardware in the Switch itself is not great. Mm. So you'd be better off playing it like through something like Stadia, which you could play on like any Chrome browser. Then we got Sifu announced coming to Switch. Another game uh, that support. I thought we already had. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not. And then we got a re- release date. I believe the release date is new for Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion. This was announced at a Square Enix thing back in June. So we already knew this was coming to Switch, but yeah. Uh, Radiant Silver Gun out this, today. This is cool. This flew under the radar, but I would say if you're a Shump fan, you probably already know about this game. This is a legendary treasure shoot 'em up that was previously only available for the Sega Saturn in Japan. And if people make like a list of top shoot 'em ups of all time, like Radiant Silver Gun usually like ranks towards the top of like the list. And if you want to buy a copy for a Sega Saturn today, it's absurdly expensive. So I believe this is like the first time the game's been poured off of Saturn, so now you don't have to spend ridiculous amounts of money to play this. You can just buy it on your Switch today. Then Endless Dungeon, it's another roguelike. Tales of Symphonia Remastered is coming early 2023. It looks very dated, mostly because the graphics that were based on the limitations of the GameCube at the time are still in place while the Tales series has moved on to kind of more accurate representations of the characters. Alright, if you compare this to a uh, Tales of Arise. Yeah, all the characters just look kind <laughs> of chubby see the and difference. it looks weird. Yeah, yeah. Life is Strange, Arcadia Bay Collection, coming yeah, September 27. This is part of a s- sizzle reel. Yeah, Romancing Saga, Minstrel Song Remastered, yeah, Lega Brick games. Tales, and Disney, Disney Speedstorm, which is their Mario Obviously Park going to be Game of the Year. Yeah. Uh, they shut off Fall Guys Season 2, I guess. And then we got the two last big announcements. First one was Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe which is a remaster of Kirby Return to Dreamland on the Wii. That was released late in the Wii's life. Uh, yeah, it looks fun. I don't know what the consensus on Return to Dreamland is. I never played it. I don't know. I'm I'm just not into Kirby. But I am into the last game that was in this yes. direct. Well, the one more thing. Which is The Legend of Zelda. We got the, we got the actual we game title. for Breath of the Wild 2. It's no longer Breath of the Wild 2. It's Tears of the Kingdom. Yes. We got a date, May 12th, 2020. The actual trailer was, again, like, really vague and did not go into details about the game. Shots of hieroglyphics from from, Uh, some highly in high... high, uh, Shots uh, of hieroglyphics, like, it (laughs) really emphasized the verticality in this game and the fact you're going to be spending a lot of time in the sky. Mm -hmm. There was a shot towards the end where it looked like Link was flying on some stone eagle vehicle thing. Yeah. uh, Which looked neat. But again, no information about the story, no really information about any new mechanics or anything about the game. Yeah, there was one shot where they had this rock that was like shooting up into the sky and it had like an outline around it, an effect that made it look like it was something akin to the abilities you have on the Sheikah Slate in Breath of the Wild. Yes. Um, And based on like other trailers, there seems to be some type of a rewind ability where you can take like an object uh, again, and ha- have it return to a previous state and I guess got, that this is something that fell from the sky and Link can they, ride it back up or something. Yeah, they, they don't explain anything we have to infer that. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the, the big thing was we got it's Tears of the Kingdom and it's releasing May 12th, 2023 which is a little, little later than I thought I was expecting March, kind of because Breath of the Wild released in March. But mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's a good not, time, it's also the end of the fiscal quarter, it, it, like it makes yeah. sense as a release date period. So yeah, May 12th. I predicted this was going to be here last night. I've been, actually, I've been like, in my head, I've been predicting this for a while because it, to me, it just seemed the best time to reveal more information about Zelda to get, at least get the title and the release date. I thought they were going to do the title and date at like the Game Awards. Nope. I thought that was going to be their big Game Awards presence was going to be showing the title and date. Nope. And Nintendo nothing Direct. else. <laughs> Nintendo Direct. And, and I'm going to make a further prediction and it's, it's not a wild prediction prediction at all. It's pretty safe, but I, I think February Direct is where they're going to do a blowout of this game and start explaining like what the storyline is and what the new mechanics and stuff May are. May is pre-E3, so they gotta do it sometime before E3, so... Yeah, so February Direct seems the best time to do that, unless they yeah. hear that or like an entire separate Zelda Tears of the Kingdom Direct by itself. Yeah, 
uh, or they could like, I doubt they would, but they could like go to another trade show that happens at a different time, like one of the penny arcades yeah. or something. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, that that doesn't really fit with them, you know. Or like I said, game awards would be another time they could do yeah. some stuff, but they usually wouldn't do that big of a blowout on a game that's not coming out that year. No. You know, they don't. Nintendo doesn't usually do that. Like if they show something that's coming out further down the line at the end of the year, what they'll show is like something that's a ways off, some, not something that's coming up soon. Like, you know, they usually try yeah. to separate. There that. won't be anything significant about this game at the Game Awards. I'm going to yeah. say it right now. I thought that would be the title and date, but they've already done that. And that makes me think it's not even going to be there. Yeah, it's not going to be there at all. But that's it for the Nintendo Direct. And that's it for our show. We had three events. We had the Sony State of Play, Disney D23, and the Nintendo Direct. Which was your favorite of the three? Uh, Nintendo Direct, easy. I'd say D23. Okay. I got more out of D23. Definitely not State of Play. <laughs> uh, no, but it was decent. It had some cool stuff in it. Sony, but I mean, Sony's getting better. They're Sony's getting getting snappier. I, I'm glad yeah, it was 20 snappier. minutes instead of like two hours, like some of the other ones they've done. Right. So they're, they're definitely getting snappier. They still need to learn a little bit, like not to over highlight a skinned controller, you know, but they're definitely getting better. How would you rate them? What would be your letter uh, grade for Sony State of Play? C plus. I'd say C. How about Disney D23? B. I'd give that like an A minus. It was right on the cusp of greatness, I think. Nice. And then uh, Nintendo Direct, I'd also give a B. Yeah, I'd go with like maybe C plus for that. Like A, something's got to blow me away. So it's got to be like, oh my God. Like Yeah, that's why I said A minus for D23. It's like, I felt like it was right on the cusp of that. It wasn't quite yeah. there, but it was right. It was close and there was a lot of stuff that looked good. And man, like I said, they, they know how to cut a trailer at Disney. Ooh, D23 could have been like A plus if like they didn't like announce half of this stuff at like uh, Comic Con. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, yeah. True. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I mean, we got to see our first look of like Werewolf by Night and you know, yeah, yeah. Secret yeah, Invasion. Yeah, definitely cool stuff. Yeah, but that's it. You can reach me on Twitter. I'm at Tyson Gifford. You can reach Will. He is at Voxel Hero. We will be recording a separate podcast this week as well. So don't worry. We're yeah. still going to have House of the Dragon and She-Hulk coverage as well as other news coverage and stuff like that. This was just done so that we could get all this kind of out of the way. So thank you everybody for listening. Good night. Good night. Thank you for listening to the On Screen Podcast, the official podcast of The Total Screen. Visit our website at thetotalscreen.com. This podcast can be found on any major podcast client, including Pocket Cast and Apple Podcast. The entire backlog of this podcast and other content can be found on our YouTube channel.